Summer is in full swing. I love the relaxed schedules and the summer fruits. Hello everyone, I'm Rebecca Keppel, and in this video I'll be sharing the stamps, dyes, and stencils that Waffle Flower sent me this month from their August release that is all about fruit. So first, let's take a look at these fabulous fruity supplies. First up is the Fruit Sentiments Stamps and Dies. These are big impact sentiments, a really fun, whimsical font, and I love that the dies cut out all the sentiments so that you can pop them up if you want to. These are the Fruity Icons die and each of these fruits has a little outline and then the fruit and some of them have little leaves i love how the dies are all included all the shapes for the fruit are included in one die each next up we have the oversized fruit stencils this is a layering stencil there's a bunch of different fruits that you could create with this and i'll show you one today but there are plenty more your imagination can run wild with this this is the oversized fruit die, same kind of deal, several dies that can create a whole bunch of different fruits. This is the puffy squares stencil, and I love the little puffy square shapes on that stencil. Now let's use them to make some cards. For this first card, I'm going to start with the oversized fruit stencils, and I am working on my eight and a half by eight and a half waffle flower grip mat, which is holding the stencil in place over the cardstock, which it's also holding in place. And I'm working on my glass mat. I'm using waffle flower blending brushes and their ink pad holder to hold distress oxides in place while I blend them with the blending brushes. For the center of the orange I'm starting with dried marigold. So even though it is one open space or several open spaces don't be afraid to blend out a couple of different colors. Here I'm using carved pumpkin to add a slightly darker orange on top starting at the center and going in a circular motion and then brushing from the center towards the outside to create that look of the fibers of the orange or the pith. So I then added a third color, but just a little bit. I didn't bring out the ink pad, just what was left on the brush there. And then you could use this just as is, as a really graphic image with the white and the orange, but I decided to cover up the white inside the orange with some mustard seed. And you can see that it is blending together all the other colors because Distress Oxide does stay wet a little bit, so it's not smearing, you can see that there's crisp lines from the stencil, but it definitely blends those colors a little bit. Finally, for the seeds, I'm using Simon Hurley's Solar Paste, and I'm using a palette knife to cover up the seeds with the solar paste. Solar paste looks white when it's wet, but it will dry in a more translucent way, and you'll see the seeds will look like they're inside the orange. Check that out. Now I have the orange inside my mini Misty, which I have another grip mat inside there to hold it in place, and I stamped one of those large fruit sentiments right in the center of the orange orange with some Versamark ink, covered it up with white embossing powder, and then heat set that. And then for a little texture to the rind of the orange, I decided to use some Simon Hurley Lunar Paste with a scoring tool. So just adding tiny little dots here and there to add a bit of texture and shine to that rind. For this next card, I'm using those puffy squares, and I have two lines of the squares that I am ink blending with Distress Oxide Mode Lawn. Then I move to two lines of squares in Squeezed Lemonade, two lines of squares in Carved Pumpkin, because I wanted this background to have a really citrusy feel so that I could do either lemons, limes, or oranges on top, and they would all look great. Plus, it's just a really fun summery color combination. Again, I was working on that grip mat to hold everything in place. Kept the grip mat on my work surface and I'm using some of the waffle flower shader brushes. Because I have those tiny little fruit icons 
dies that I've cut out of yellow cardstock. I'm using the shader brush and some mowed lawn to color in the leaves and the stems with a little bit of ink. And you can see that they stay right in place on the grip mat, just holds those tiny little die cuts in place while you work on them with a little bit of ink. And I even added a little bit of white gel pen details. Just be careful not to poke your grip mat or get it in touch with anything that is too sharp, but my gel pen is pretty blunt. Now I'm moving over to the glass mat because I don't want to get adhesive on my grip mat. Then I stamped pucker up on a piece of white cardstock and I'll use the coordinating dies to cut those out and then I can start putting my card together. So the yellow cardstock that I cut the lemons out of, you can see it in the back there. I'm gonna use it as the A2 card and the background, and then I cut down the stenciled part into four by five and a quarter. Then I'll pop up, pucker up, and all of those lemons so that they stand out from the background. And then I added some waffle flower enchanted enamel dots. That yellow seemed to match perfectly to what I had going on in the background. Just added a little bit of embellishment to that center area of the card. Just a reminder, these grip mats, especially with Distress Oxide that is reactive to water, clean up beautifully. Just spritzed a little water on there and I have a little towel and I can wipe off all that ink. I can't promise that that will happen with every ink that you have, but that's why I like to use Distress Oxide ink because I know it's reactive to water and it's easy to clean. The other thing you can do with the grid lines that you receive with the grip mats is use them as a mask. And so this time, instead of using tape to mask off different lines of that puffy square stencil, I'll just use the eight and a half by eight and a half grid line that is that acetate piece and I can move it down on the grip mat. It stays stuck to the grip mat so it stays in place and that will just mask off the different rows. So this time I'm doing every other row in kitsch flamingo pink and then I'll go back in and mask off the kitsch flamingo and do a little bit of mowed lawn. So we'll have pink and green every other row and it really comes out nice with that ability to mask off those areas so you don't get too much overflow of ink from one color to another. And that grip mat just helps everything stay in place. This is the Fruit Icons watermelon slice. This time I've cut several slices of those watermelons out of black cardstock, pink cardstock for the watermelon. It's got those little etched lines for the seeds and green cardstock for the rind. I decided to add a little bit of black Copic multi-liner to those little etched areas or die cut areas for those seeds so that it really stands out as the black seeds of a watermelon. Really simple, just go over it with a little bit of a really fine tip pen. Then I'll have all of the cardstock that I used to cut out this um, watermelon dies, I'm going to layer on top of each other. So I have black as the A2, then I made the pink a quarter shorter on both sides, and then the green a quarter inch shorter on both sides, and then the stenciled area a quarter inch shorter on both sides so that it would just progress down so that I could see all of the colors and that stenciled area. I popped up the You're So Sweet sentiment that I stamped in black and then die cut. And now I have the outlines of the watermelon so I can place them exactly where I want them on the card, just adhere them down with a little bit of liquid glue. Then I place the actual watermelon fruit inside and then I just put a little bit of liquid glue in the area where the rind would go and pop those in like little puzzle piece and look at how cute those little watermelons are. Next up I used some of Waffle Flowers black enamel dots and just had a little accent there for that card. For the next card I used the oversized fruit dies. So I cut the stem or top of the strawberry out of an A2 piece of green cardstock and then the strawberry itself out of a piece, an A2 piece of red cardstock. And I stamped one of the fruit sentiments right on top in Versamark ink, poured some white and 
frosting powder on top and then heat set that. And once that was all dry and cool, I used a little towel to get rid of any stray pieces of embossing powder and any bits of anti-static powder tool. Then I adhered it down to an A2 piece of white cardstock, leaving a little bit at the bottom of that and placed the stem on top. There's a die that has many seeds connected to one so you don't have to save a teeny tiny little die and cut it out a million times, which I think is brilliant. I love when Waffle Flower thinks of things like this because I lose teeny tiny dies all the time. So I used that teeny tiny die to create strawberry seeds and then adhered them down with some liquid adhesive. I had so much fun with this fabulous fruity release. If anything caught your eye, I'd love to hear about it in the comments below. YouTube thinks you might be interested in checking out this video next. As always, I want to thank you so much for stopping by and spending time with me today. Please stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you again soon at these fruit fabulous supplies. Fabulous. Fabulous. <laughs> There's no tea. Fruity, fabulous, fruity. With me today. Today. <laughs> today. <laughs>